All right, new project. Uh, I had a need for a grader for my property up in, in Maine and uh, been watching lots of videos. Uh, I'll give a shout out to, uh, to Diesel Creek. I've been watching his, uh, his video on a Galleon 503 and sure turned me on to the model and sure enough, I, I found one. Um, so I'm going to be fixing this one up. My videos won't be nearly as entertaining as his. So I'm just basically recording what I'm doing um, more so for my own memory and everything else that I want to do. Uh, but if anybody picks something up or sees anything, I think that's nice to be helpful. So what have I got here? I have uh, unknown year, anywhere from late 50s to the to the early 70s. I have no idea what what year this machine is it is a six cylinder d236 international harvester engine it does run fairly well it's got a slight miss at high rpm that i'll i'll be diagnosing and, and figuring out it may just be no more than a clogged fuel injector at least that's what i hope i'm still running whatever fuel was in it um does need some tires i have i have some tires that i've already gotten can't wait to put those on um doing some maintenance work and, and fixing up um, what does it got? Let's talk about the uh, the features. Uh, does not have the uh, does not have the drum brakes, and I'll be talking more about that in in a subsequent video on something I'm doing. Um, it has the side shift blade, uh, and it has a scarifier, and it is manual steering. Again, more things I'm going to be talking about. So anyway, I got this machine uh, off the internet. And I bought it at a yard. I was all happy to get it. Um, it had everything I think I'm going to need. Um, however, after I paid for it, I got a phone call and that happened. I was not too happy. The yard was at. They had some other big equipment there and they dropped something on my cab. So you can see it is rather smashed. Um, I'll talk more about what we're going to do with that again in another video. So what have I been doing? Um, I want to get ready to change all the fluids. Uh, one of the things that I did notice is this was leaking very, very badly on the drum for the brake. So you can see I have now pulled this off. Not too difficult. Um, it had some kind of weird homemade pump with a with a uh, axle shaft on it. Somebody removed it but left the stub there. Uh, fortunately, which is bolted on to the to the brake drum, so that's off. That seal was leaking pretty badly. I do have the Galleon parts book and nobody could cross reference the any of the parts out of the parts book, which is a little bit disappointing, but um, I got the brake drum off and I managed to get the national part number off the seal and I have a nice new seal. And if anybody's interested, there is the part number. Let's hope it's correct. I'm gonna be climbing under here, taking it out and making sure it fits. Um, cross-referenced the galleon to a Clark, believe it or not, and then we triple cross-referenced it back to Timken. Let's see how that climb under here. Let's see what we're. Let's see if this looks correct. I'll check the inner diameter here. Oh yeah, that looks like it's going to be tight. That's that's that is definitely right on that part. And I don't know if anybody can see the part number on the old one there, but it is definitely correct on the outside. So I'm going to be yanking that seal out, get the socket out, drive this one in, put my brake drum. On. I might clean that brake drum up, put her back on there, and then I'm ready to change the uh, the fluids. Uh, everything here it calls for 90 weight uh, SAE 90 or SAE 50 HD um, from the uh, research I've done 80 80 90 should be this equivalent to uh, the old SAE 90 should be fine um, I know I could put uh, 50 weight in it too it's but my Concern with putting 50 weight in it. I, I can get transmission oil for 50 weight, but only in synthetic from what I can find. Which normally I really like running synthetic. I'm, I'm an AMS oil person. Uh, however, 
I don't know if anything in here is bronze facing and I really am concerned about putting synthetic in anything that might have bronze bushings in it. So I really want to run conventional, even though that's not what I would normally do, but on something this old, I think that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to go with 8090 and call it good. Gear oil is gear oil as far as I'm concerned. So that is, I think I calculated 12 gallons of oil. And uh, I think that's what I need, 12, 12 to 15. So I'm going to get three five-gallon buckets of it. Uh, we're going to go with conventional in this case. It's not like I'm running this commercially for hours and hours and on end. I'm sure whatever's in there is probably <laughs> almost original. And uh, I think I'll get away with conventional just fine. Um, and I'm going to be addressing this brake band. It's mostly okay. However, I'm getting close to a rivet up here on the top where there was some wear. As you can tell with all the oil that was slopping on this thing, uh, breaking even though the, the band is fine and, and it squeezes. Uh, with that much lubrication on it, it wasn't doing a whole lot. So looking forward to getting all this cleaned up. I'll probably... Yeah, I was going to power wash, but I don't want to do it when, that, when that's open. Um, we'll get the new seal in here, get this cleaned up some more. Uh, make sure the, the drum is good and dry. Get I have, uh, I have another solution. Again, another video I want to do. And we'll be replacing this brake band. Okay, so I'm just going to get out the screwdriver, yank out that old seal, and get the socket out, drive in the new seal. And then we'll start reassembly. All right, so we have a friend with a body shop, and he gave us a bunch of these picks. He's he's kind of an older guy. I think he's kind of slowing down, so he gave us he was nice enough to give us some of his tools. Um, so I'm going to use this. To, I'm going to try and use this to pull out that old seal. I think it's going to work better than a screwdriver. Well, I, I did bring one out, but I it's kind of a pain. Let's see let's see how this works. I haven't I haven't tried it this way, but it's got a nice 90 degree, and she's kind of stiff. Let's see if I can get in behind the lip here. And get that out of there. That would be, that'd be kind of nice. Let's give it a shot. I'm going to give it a good yank. I may have to get a hammer. I don't know. Mm. Let's see, let's see if I have any luck. Yeah, I'm going to have to get a hammer on there, but I'm going to put something on this. I'm going to hammer it, see if I can pull this old seal out. I mean, normally I've, I've done things where you, you basically destroy the old seal to get it out. and I'm going to try and do this. Pull it out of there. And see what I can do. I can't quite. I was hoping if I could just give it a couple pops by hand. Maybe I, there was so much oil in there I could get it out, but I'm not getting very far. All right, I'm going to hammer away at this and we'll see what we get. I'll let you know how it goes. I can't do this with, unfortunately, with just one hand. Uh, no way to mount my camera here. So I'll just show you when I'm done. All right, plan A was the screwdriver, plan B was the pick. I wasn't very happy with how any of them were working. So plan C, I don't know if this will work, but we're going to try something else. Um, I couldn't get a very good purchase with the screwdriver on an angle. I flipped around my gear puller. I'm going to see if I can make this a seal puller. I don't know if this will work, but I'm going to give it a shot. So on she's going to go. Get that inside the seal lip. See if I can't just uh, pull it out of there. If it works, that'd be fantastic. Again, this is absolutely one I can't do with holding the camera. So if that works, I'll let you know. I didn't think I'd be able to video this, but now that I've got the puller in there, snapped it in around the edges, I'm gonna, let's see how this works, if it works. Let's give it a shot. I got all the, I got the ears around the edges. Let's see, I'm just gonna start cranking. See what happens. See, am I still focused on there? Oh, it's pulling right out. Looky, looky. Gosh, that's the easiest I've ever done this. I don't know why. I don't know why I'd never thought of this before. Oops, there goes my wrench. I don't know why I'd never thought of this before. This works really, this is working really well. It's coming right out. Ta -da! Oh, of course. Oh, naturally. Well, anyway, I got it out. Now I made a mess. 
One seal removed. Excellent. Now it's going to be time to drive in the new one. Well, that was easy, but messy. All right, now that I fished everything out of the oil, um, old one. Again, if you're anybody cares about the old part number, there's the old part number. And here's the new Timken. I already put it on there. I said it, it's definitely the same. I would say dimensionally they look the same. And I think the only difference is the old seal might have been slightly wider than the new one, but not, not on the outside dimensions, just the thickness of the seal. So I would say that is definitely the, uh, the right one. So we're going to drive that on there. Go get my big socket. 